Hello America, I'm Brown Hollihan, 13-year-old editor-in-chief of the Truth Gazette here today in a very special place, the West Wing of the White House in our nation's capital, sitting across well, the room here from White House Press Secretary and Communication Director, Ms. Stephanie Grisham. Ms. Grisham, thank you so much for taking the time. No, this is my favorite. Schedule. Thank yes, you so course. much for doing yeah, this. No problem. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Ms. Grisham, we're going to bump the order of our questions just a little bit here. Talking about some breaking news that broke this morning, and that is Speaker Pelosi's announcement of the articles of impeachment against the president. Where do you see this going, and what is the White House's response? We expected this, unfortunately. Uh, the two articles of impeachment that she did today were kind of silly, so we expected actually more. I think that she knows that she had very little, so we uh, we remain optimistic. The president has said he expected this, and if it goes to the Senate, we're, we're looking forward to that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ms. Gershom, this is something I spoke to Sarah Sanders about in my interview with her, but I'd like to bring it up to you as well. You're only the fourth woman and second ever mother to hold the office of White House Press Secretary. How do you think this unique difference from other White House press secretaries has affected the way you serve? Well, I think that as a woman, um, and I'm sure your mother could uh, attest to this, we are able to multitask quite well. I think you can be a little bit more in tune to people's feelings as well. Uh, Sarah and I both have big teams of people, so being able to manage a lot of people and understand different personalities and also just juggle the day-to-day -day plus your family life at, at home, that, that's a lot, but I think that motherhood helps you multitask. Ms. Christian, there's something quite special about your White House role that most people don't know. You not only serve as White House Press Secretary, but White House Communications Director. On top of that, Communications Director and First Lady. Three major jobs for one historic person. How do you balance having all these three major White House roles, and as previously mentioned, being mother? So I'm very fortunate because uh, President Trump and Mrs. Trump, I've been with them for a very, very long time, and so I know them very, very well. Mrs. Trump is extremely supportive of me being a, a parent, and so she's always saying work from home, be with your family, that's important. The president's also very good with that too. So they recognize that. Uh, they were the same with Sarah as well, and, and again, that helps balance. But Mrs. Trump is a big role model to me. She's a mother as well, as you know, and she's taught me you know, what's important and how to balance. Absolutely. The media tries to portray Trump as a mean and selfish billionaire, but you have known him since he was a candidate. Mm -hmm. How is the president you see behind the scenes different than that of the one that the media is portraying? He is very kind, uh, and he has a great sense of humor, so does Mrs. Trump. Actually, it's my favorite thing about both of them. He is, uh, he's, he likes to listen, and um, contrary to what people say, he really does take the feedback of his staff. He respects Absolutely. the opinions. He doesn't always listen to us, but he listens in terms of, you know, listening, taking it in, and then he ultimately decides. That's very important for mm -hmm. the position he has. Yes. Um, every day you serve alongside the president, you have to fight back against fake news media. And I just want to give you props for doing so, because after doing what I've been doing for the past two years, I see how harsh the media can be. Yes. Um, how do you think we as Americans can do to fight back against fake, fake news media? It's a good question. Uh, my Before I became um, so integral in politics, even at the state level, I used to listen to people talk about the fake news or media bias, and I kind of thought they were a little nutty, to be yeah. honest with you. And now that I've seen it firsthand, um, I think it's doing a real disservice to the country. So my thought is that we, in this administration, and we in the media who know better just need to get the, the message out to people that they need to do their own research Absolutely. and not just believe every headline, the first headline they see, or the chirons on the networks. It's, it's not always true, unfortunately, and I just hope that people will start to do their own research. Search. You previously served on the president's 2016 presidential campaign and saw him win a landslide victory. Mm -hmm. What is your prediction of the outcome of the 2020 election? I think he will win again. I think that this time it won't be as much of a surprise. I think that he's had so many results already, and I think that all of this going on with impeachment is showing that they're scared. I think he's going to win hands down. You can't not with this economy and the jobs numbers he's had, and then just the success he's had overseas uh, with NATO and some of our, our foreign other foreign countries. And as we start wrapping things up here, some news that broke recently, yesterday's release of the IG report. I want to give you a platform here to give us the White House's response to that release. That release was really chilling. And I'll tell you something I have not told anybody um, on in any other interview. When I got briefed on that report yesterday, I, I felt sick to my stomach because 
as as the president, as a citizen, nobody should be investigated by an intelligence agency in this way. And as has been reported, there were 17 major errors done along the way. And there were many times that documents were falsified and uh, the court was lied to. And when I got briefed, I said, this, this sounds like a movie. I, this, yeah. I can't believe this. I don't want to believe this. So that's really, really scary. And uh, the president, I think, is going to do everything in his power to make sure this does not happen again to any other president, no matter the party. And finally, closing things up here, as we mentioned in the beginning, you also serve as communication director to First Lady Melania Trump. Mm -hmm. And she's the whole reason I'm here in D.C. again, since I was invited to tour her watch beautiful mm -hmm. um, Christmas decorations here at the White House. Why do you think for such a well-accomplished, just all-around incredible woman, she does not receive the tremendous praise she deserves and instead gets the scrutiny of the media? I think that it's because she's in this this administration with this president as her husband. I think that if she was in a, a Democratic administration, such as our previous one, she would be gracing the covers of every magazine. She speaks five languages. She's one of the kindest people I know. She only wants to help children. Um, and she really is a role model. And it's actually, it's really sad that media outlets everywhere aren't covering her more. And not just her, but what she wants to do for children and the message she wants to get across. Um, but she's an incredible woman and she's taught me a lot. She's actually a role model for me. Well, as I finish up today, I just want to thank you for taking the time to your extremely busy schedule to sit down with me here in the West Wing of the White House, just steps away from the President yes. of the United States in the Oval Office. I do have to add, if the President is ever open for an interview, we have to get a hold of me. <laughs> I'll let him know. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all the time we have left. Ms. Stephanie Grisham, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.